They are desperate, and they've turned to project labor agreements as the answer, using the government and the coercive power, power of government to force uh, uh, construction jobs funded by taxpayers to be built by unions. So we've gone to the public about this. We had a ballot initiative in Chula Vista in June. It was an ordinance to ban project labor agreements. The unions pulled out all the stops, spent a huge amount of money, sent tons of people out precinct walking. I think our biggest problem was they just had the wrong message. They were on the wrong side. It was very hard for them to argue, oh, you know, we should be uh, able to, we should be able to have a monopoly on Chula Vista taxpayer-funded projects. It passed 54-46. Uh, they even attempted a language on, on a Spanish language TV. It was a commercial comparing the Vienna project labor agreements to the immigration uh, bill that passed in Arizona. And actually, I think it backfired on them because I don't even think that the people who were watching uh, Univision actually believed it because it was just too absurd to destroy their credibility. <laughs> At the same time, we had a uh, we had a, a charter in uh, in Oceanside, uh, and this charter was your typical charter, except there were some extra things added to it, such as a Vienna Project Labor Agreements, uh, an exemption for city construction projects from the so-called prevailing wage that the state determines, and also there was paycheck protection for public employees. Uh, that charter, they, they had had three previous uh, uh, chances uh, to approve charters in Oceanside. They were all defeated, I think, going back to 1990. Well, this one passed 54-46. Apparently, regular people out there like fiscal responsibility and, and fair and open competition. And in fact, uh, yeah, it, it's hard to believe. Yeah. We, we learned a valuable lesson that if you give the regular people a chance to vote on this, you know what, they aren't going for the union agenda. The union agenda is a self-interested agenda. It's their right to go after it. I know why they do it. They're, you know, it's in their own self-interest. But you know, it's not in the interest of most people, and I know the people here do not agree with their agenda. We just uh, we need to have more ballot initiatives. We need to to show up at these meetings and build relationships with local elected officials so that when they have a tough vote, they will have the backbone to stand up. Not everybody has the backbone of Carl DeMaio and John Warlock. And if you get out there and provide them with a backbone and accountability, you'll have a better shot at it. We've been doing a lot of mailers exposing people, including Republicans, who vote for project labor agreements, who want to expand and increase prevailing wage, which has no relationship at all to market wages. It's all about uh, accountability, staying firm, and uh, reminding these elected officials that they don't work for the unions, they serve the people who elected them to office. And uh, you know, I can't give you any solutions because fundamentally it's a problem of the heart, but these are some of the logical things that we can try to do on a practical basis to change public policy. Because my life was being threatened. 
I know Steve and Carl and John all have similar stories that the hatred, the vitriol, um, you know, Kevin spoke of the sinful, man's sinful nature, you know, it's there, believe me, and it's not just on the union side, I don't want to put that there. But there are problems that we can all uh, address, uh, you know, as uh, Republican brothers and sisters, if you will. Um, this isn't lost, it's not over yet. So right now what I'd like to do is open it up and uh, take questions from the audience. And let's, let's get these guys back in the uh, game. This is right there. Mr. Cohen, I, I agree with you where you had this on the ballot in June, and you look at the voting side instead of November. I think if you think back, we did Prop 26, and we did it in November, and we did a good job of getting it on the ballot, but then we didn't have the money to compete with the unions. They turned out all their Democrats. It failed, and we elected more Democrats. If we're going to do anything in 2012, I would suggest you do it at the presidential primary. When Obama's the only one on the ballot unless Hillary runs against him, and the Democrats will stay home, the Republicans will turn out. Great advice, we're doing it. Yeah, we yeah. have plans for several ballot initiatives uh, in various local governments throughout the state, and we see uh, if it turns out to be a Republican primary election for uh, a president, it will be a fantastic opportunity for us to uh, have our voters come out and support uh, banning project labor agreements, exempting from prevailing wage, et cetera. And same thing with, the, uh, with, the, with any pension reform. Uh, great opportunity coming in February. Let me also add to that. We uh, were, while Proposition G uh, was going on in Chula Vista, we were collecting signatures in the city of San Diego on a uh, more comprehensive reform that was dealing with managed competition or outsourcing and the rules that you would contract under, which would be banning project labor agreements. And uh, on a technicality, it didn't qualify for November. And while we were preparing our budget for November, the consultants came back and said, easily, given what they're going to spend against you and the sort of turnout you're going to have with Jerry Brown and Barbara Boxer, you guys have to be ready to spend a million to a million five, maybe a little more. Well, when we were disqualified from November, we started looking at February or June of 2012, the consultant came back and said, okay, your budget is going to be three hundred dollars to $400,000. And it's because, you know, frankly, people who pay attention show up in primaries. They understand what's really going on. They're not going to be persuaded by some bizarre, distorted, uh, emotionally appealing ad during a general election. So uh, the same thing happened with Proposition G, Chula Vista, we tried qualifying it several times. The very last time that it was disqualified, it would have been on the ballot in the November 2008 Obama surge year. Thank goodness it got bumped to June. So I, I would absolutely uh, say that the Republican Party and reformers need to understand your best shot at reforming and changing the rules of the game is to qualify initiatives for the March slash June primary in 2012. The economy is not seeming to be getting any better right now. People are still going to be in a pretty foul mood on what government has done to their day-to-day -day lives and it's our opportunity, so let's get things qualified for that primary. And I believe Paycheck Protection, the, uh, they're talking about bringing it back, we would also be good at that ballot. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, there is a little balance on that. Uh, we did our measure, J in the November of 2008. Obama, Lake County, got 75% of the vote. Democrats, Republicans, independents, they kind of state, they understand finances. So if it's a good fiscal issue, it doesn't matter. I agree. I agree. People are getting it more now than more than ever. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, I'm a state worker and I stuck at the SIU and we trained. We're in the process of deserting the union. Say what? We're in the process of deserting the SIU. And uh, all the people hey. of the party did this. Turn their back. Because they're afraid their state workers in the Republican election, all state workers too, are more interested in being reelected and concerned with going to the SIU's corrupt union. I'm on TV on CPA.org. And we did our own news checkup. We spent $100. We got 13,000 signatures against the union. Great. Also, I was a national delegate to the SIU. We had 800 votes to tell them to stick with their news increase. So this union is not supported by the workers. And I think we need to understand that. If they say, well, the SIU represents the workers, then there's something wrong with the Republican Party. Oh, I think that makes up a good point, Eric, if I can jump in. Uh, Unions in St. Orange County, uh, they're, they're run by the older guys in the union. 